everyone welcome to another stream kind of an impromptu one uh we're gonna be doing some nintendo entertainment system games tonight predictable stuff that you guys have seen me play a thousand times but um you know i figured it would probably be good to crank out another stream and i'm kind of in a mood for nes right now anyway and uh yes yeah, so we're gonna play some comfy games or <laughs> games that are comfy for me at least i know some of these games are pretty hard for some people but i've been playing a lot of these for over 30 years now, so uh, needless to say, don't usually need to practice them. I can jump in and just play through them. And so we're gonna do just that with a bunch of games. And we're just gonna hang out for a couple of hours. And uh, yeah, it should be a good time. So let me scroll through chat here before I get started. I saw Aberdeen Hank was out there. He was the first one along with Freddie Voorhees. Welcome back guys. We got big dogs out there, Crestline Iceberg. And uh, MD Misters here. We got a Veiler. We got Leo. Welcome back, Leo. Hope your internet's doing better. Uh, we've also got Tony Hayden. How's it going, Tony? Welcome back. Thanks for uh, rejoining. Yeah, thank you very much for uh, rejoining as a channel member. I appreciate that. I love how uh, Streamlabs still shows it as a sponsor, uh, when in reality it's uh, it's channel member. <laughs> Back in the early days of YouTube gaming, uh, when you could do paid subs, it, they were, it was called sponsorships, but now it is channel memberships. But yeah, thanks Tony for that, I appreciate that. Let me get my mic situated here. I see, uh, listen to Motorhead and Trev is out there. Welcome back guys, welcome back. But yeah, let's go ahead and jump into some, uh, some Ninja Gaiden. 
just gonna kind of rush through the game. This one shouldn't take us very long, so... Um, but yeah, one of my all-time favorite NES games. I know some speed strats in this, so I'm, I'm gonna be doing some things in uh, ways that, you know, some... Uh, some people will not, because, you know, not everybody knows speedrun strats on this game. But, uh... I don't know the strats for the whole game. Uh, I had learned a lot of the, the speedrun, but uh, there was also a lot that I did not learn. But the first couple levels in particular, pretty... I'm still, I think I've still got pretty decently when it comes to speed strats. I'm gonna go ahead and just take a hit here, because I'm gonna instant kill this boss. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. <laughs> That's funny. Aberdeen asks, how are you, Austin? I'm okay, man. I'm okay. Head hurts. I just took some ibuprofen, profen, and, uh... You know, hopefully the headache goes away over the course of the stream. I did actually go out and I exercised for the first time in a while, actually. Um, hooked up with my brother, we went to the uh, the gym in our apartment complex, and so I did some uh, weightlifting that I don't normally do. And I think that just, uh, like, exacerbated, like, the, the tension headache I already had. So... So, yeah, I took some ibuprofen. Which, generally, I'm not supposed to take because of, like, you know, some of the, uh, the heart meds and stuff like that. But some sometimes it's just like, ugh. The headache gets so bad, I, I just have to. <laughs> I have to risk it. But yeah, doing well otherwise. I'm gonna be staying up pretty late tonight. After my YouTube stream here, I will probably stream a little bit on Twitch, do some... I think I'm gonna probably play... Oops. Yeah, that's weird. Probably try to play some uh, some Dead Cells or something like that. I've been playing that a lot recently. Uh, really trying to make progress in that. More progress than I have previously. Uh, when I was previously getting into it. Speaking of Dead Cells and similar types of games, I've actually ordered Hades uh, for PS5. And that should hopefully get here later this week. I ordered that from Amazon. And uh, so I'm really looking forward to diving into that. Because I hear that it's, it's basically like, you know, the same kind of like roguelike gameplay as like Dead Cells, except it's more like top-down action. So, yeah, looking forward to that. Yeah, basic stuff here. Use the Spin Slash at specific moments. Try to have enough energy to uh, be able to one-shot the boss. Alright, we're good. Just like that. Freddy says, uh, we played Bomberman Live Battle Fest. Never heard of that one. What is that? Burnout Revenge, Dead or Alive 5, and some original Xbox games like Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2X and Mega Assault 2. Oh, you got some game- you got some work buddies over at your place. You've been playing some multiplayer games on 360. Nice. Deathmatch in Perfect Dark, the original. Hell yeah, that's- that's a fun time. I miss playing, uh, GoldenEye and Perfect Dark multiplayer. Those were- those were really good times. Yeah, very good times. I mean, especially GoldenEye. <laughs> Actually, you know what? Perfect Dark may have had a better, better multiplayer. Because they, they basically just took what made GoldenEye great and just added to it with some crazy weapons like the laptop gun. <laughs> yeah, I actually haven't done Perfect Dark multiplayer since the game was actually new on the market. Um, yeah, it's been that long, but... I did play the hell out of it, multiplayer-wise, anyway, when it first came out. One of my best friends at the time bought the game day one, and we had a routine where we would, like, work out, and then go for, like, a run, and then we would, uh, go back and rest, you know, drink a protein shake, play, like, a couple hours of Perfect Dark multiplayer. It's good times. Getting some exercise and playing a great multiplayer game. Oops. Yeah, I like having this fire wheel for this boss. It's just the way it's angled. You can get uh, a handful of hits if you angle it just right, or you aim it just right. 
Availer says uh, he picked those games up in the spring Steam sale as well. Still struggling with making a dent in the game backlog, though. Well, that's the thing with these sales. It's like you're constantly adding to your backlog. Like, I've given up on, uh, you know, my digital backlog in particular. I've just, like, I still add to it occasionally, but I know that I'm probably not going to play most of the games I buy. Or I'm not going to play them for more than, like, a couple of minutes, you know. Nice, got it. Aberdeen asks, do I have any plans for summer? No. Um, <laughs> same old, same old, man. Alright, skip through the cutscenes. Oops. Man, what am I doing? I was going really fast, now I'm going really slow. is a health refill right there. And there's going to be an extra life over to the left right here. I don't really need the extra lives, but I, I like to grab them anyway. Freddy says, Bomberman uh, Live Battle Fest is basically the true, better Xbox 360 Bomberman experience than the mainstream edgy one. Oh, Act Zero. Well, no one ever talks about Act Zero. <laughs> but yeah, I think I know what you're talking about now, Freddy. I think I think I remember a Bomberman coming to Xbox Live Arcade, and that's, that's probably the one you're talking about. But yeah, no one talks about Act Zero. It was a very, very poorly received game back in the day. It's not like it's unplayable or anything, it's just, uh, there's some really weird, uh, oops, did not mean to do that. Some really weird design choices. Like, I think there was this mode where, like, you had to go through the whole game without dying or something stupid like that. I don't remember exactly what it was. I actually do want to give that dumb game a try again, but, yeah. Yeah, so I'm not going to be able to quick kill the boss because I, I picked up the wrong weapon. But that's fine. I always have a hard time doing the fast, rapid slash. If you press down and B rapidly in the air, you can do multiple slashes, but it's, it's really tough for me to do for some reason. Yeah, I got a couple of them. And Jason, welcome back. Freddy says, uh, Bomberman was digital only, which, yeah, that makes sense. A lot of the Xbox Live Arcade games back then weren't ever released on physical discs. But he says it can go up to eight players locally. That's actually pretty crazy. Oops. Yeah, we're already getting close to the end of the game, guys. <laughs> When you really know what you're doing in Ninja Gaiden, it's not that long of a game. But it's one of the things I love about the game, is like, it's it's a good action game I can just kind of like go through pretty quickly. It's not a very big time commitment. I can beat this game and then still feel like I got time for a few others, you know, which is nice. When I play longer games, I don't I don't get that sort of feeling. That guy, get a little boost. Uh-oh.
Tony says, I need to practice this game. I've been bad at it a lot lately. Why are you bad at this game, Tony? I don't know why, I always assumed you'd probably be good at this game. Given how, like, you're a big fan of Castlevania-style games, and this is just right up there with, with those games. Oh, no! I... was waiting for him to attack, but I was like, nah, he's not gonna attack. That was totally my fault. I also didn't want to, like, use up uh, the last bit of my energy. You haven't played it in a while, you're out of practice. Sounds like you need to get back in practice, good sir. Alright, we want to just, like, run and jump through this next section. Using this fire shield. Makes life a little bit easier here. And then wait, and then jump. Alright, close to the boss fight. We got this screen, and then one more. But once you get here, you're pretty much just good to go. And this guy, we're just gonna smack him over and over again. Boom, 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 boom. You're just trading hits. I love the wall jumping in this game. It's it's completely manual, whereas in Ninja Gaiden 2, it, it's um, you can just climb up the walls automatically. With this, you have to hold A, like reverse the direction, and then reverse it back. And you got to do it really quickly if you want to be efficient at it. A lot of people struggle with it, but it's one of those things where, like, when you get good at it, it's it's really satisfying. First section down. Yeah, so with my spin slash here, when you press B in the air, you automatically do a uh, kind of like a whirlwind slash. But you can press down and B in the air to use your sword instead as like a normal slash. And it uses a uh, five weapon energy, or ninpo as they call it. But it's so, pressing down and B is a way to uh, not use the weapon energy, so you can kind of conserve it. And just jump on the ladder. How can I skip those cutscenes? Uh, by pressing start, Trev. <laughs> I know that's not what you were asking, but... <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm not pl playing any of the cutscenes until the ending, because I want to... I want to play as many games as possible. Uh, oops, I did not mean to get that. In as little time as possible. It's like, we'll probably end up playing Battletoads, and instead of playing through the whole game, uh, I will do just, like, the warp zones. Which turns, like, an hour-long run into a, uh, much shorter run. Hey, John Evan, welcome back. Shouts to my friend A uh, Aquas out there. He taught me that, uh, that trick where you can just climb up on the right side of the wall. He is a uh, insanely good speedrunner at this game. He, like, his runs are crazy. I was wanting to get to that level with this game, but I don't just don't have the dedication. You know, I feel like I could be doing other things with my life or playing different games. I think I'm I'm less of like a perfectionist for one game, and or a handful of games, and more so like I like to dabble with a lot of different games and try to get my hands on as many different games as possible.
Also, once you start grinding out like the same thing over and over again, it's the frustration level goes up even even more because like you expect to be perfect, and when you don't do things perfectly, you're like, oh, it's time to restart, and it just gets frustrating, frustrating. All right. Just hit that core in the middle, and with the spin slash, you can basically just do it in one hit. Mm. Yeah, Freddy, I mean, the 360 store is not... I mean, it's not the end of the world, because, like, you can pretty easily hack 360s now, and everything's been preserved uh, in that manner, so... Honestly, in a way, you know, I don't... Uh, it's probably gonna be a little controversial, but in a way, it's almost better that it's getting taken offline, because now you can grab the games and not feel bad. Because <laughs> you can't give Microsoft money for them anymore, uh, so it's like, alright, I'll just play them for free now. <laughs> So, it's just one way of looking at it, you know? But, uh, backwards compatible stuff, you're still gonna be able to buy through Xbox One and Series X, and apparently, if you have the same Xbox Live account connected, uh, to that, to your 360, uh, they'll let you go back and re-download them on the 360, even if you buy them on, say, like, the Xbox One shop, or Xbox Marketplace, sorry. So not everything's gonna be, uh, you know, no longer purchasable. You're just gonna have to do it through different methods, like doing it through an Xbox One or Series console. Yeah, exactly what Kyle said, yeah. All right, I will let the ending play out at least. Aberdeen, don't start with me, man. <laughs> I'm not doing any long ass games on the on this stream. Hell no. <laughs> uh. Hey Ian, what's going on, man? I, sorry, dude. I actually meant to message you earlier this week. I, I got your uh, care package. Um, it was awesome. So thank you so much for that, man. Made my mom's day, too. She already ate one of those bags of, like, the, uh, Chex Mix stuff. The trail mix kind of stuff. She said it was really, really good. What about Xbox 360 games we already bought? Will they still be in our library? 100%, they will, yes. You just won't be able to buy any, any new ones from the Xbox 360. Yeah, it's, um... You know, it, it does suck that you're not gonna be able to buy stuff on the 360 anymore, but... I'm at the point where it's kind of like... Personally speaking, I think I've got almost everything, like, I would want... Digitally. Like, I've... I've... Was a big supporter of the digital stuff on 360. Like, the Xbox Live Arcade stuff. Five and ten dollar games. I... I think I bought just about every game that I think I'd ever want to... Try to mess around with, so... Yeah, you're gonna be able to re-download the games you already bought, yep. I, I, you know, I will have to take another look through the shop, though, just to make sure there's not anything else that, like, I'm missing, but I, I think there's... I've got almost everything that I'd, I'd want on there, like arcade conversions and stuff like that. I already have a lot of the stuff that was delisted, like, ten years ago, like... You know, X-Men and The Simpsons and stuff like that. Uh, John Evan, I have not. Uh, I don't plan on getting that for a while, because it's a little too expensive... ...for what it is, from what I can tell. It's like 40 bucks digitally, and there's no physical version yet. If they had a physical one, I'd probably buy it full price, but they don't have one yet. I think it's not coming out till later. Yeah, Comper uh, Contra Operation Galuga, it, it looks okay. 
And the more gameplay I look, uh, I watch of it, I'm like, eh. It, it's probably fun, but not like, it doesn't look like it's, uh, some of the production values just seem off, kind of cheap. Does anyone uh, know if the Metroid Prime Remaster was good for Switch? It was excellent, Ian. Definitely get it if you're interested in Metroid Prime. Yeah, I mean, supposedly it's really awesome. Everybody I've heard that's played it just has nothing but good things to say. I'd like to- I'd actually like to play that, but I kind of want to play Metroid Prime on the GameCube. I'm, I want to do it in its original form. Alright, we're going to go ahead and change games. Good old Ninja Guide. Thanks for the GG availer. I appreciate that. And Freddy and Jason. And Aberdeen. Thanks, guys. All right. <laughs> Good old Castlevania, right? Hey, John Smith. Welcome back. Tony, thanks for the GG. Playing all these action games will prepare me for my dead cells later tonight. <laughs> the game gets... I'm on three boss cells right now. And, uh, it's getting quite challenging at this point. I'm trying to go for all five boss cells since I've never done that. And it's, uh, it's been a bit of a grind. But a fun grind. I love, like, the rhythmic nature of, like, all the sound effects in this game. The candles are kind of spaced out apart pretty evenly, so it's like, jump, whip! You hit you hit the candle, and it makes, like, this, this nice, satisfying sound, and then it's like a money bag, and you grab the money bag, and it makes, like, a really cool sound, too. And then you hit an enemy, and then another enemy. It's just, like, a very rhythmic kind of sound package or sound design. I love it. This is a way to try to get extra lives. You know, you combo enemies with uh, one projectile and you get bonus points. But these guys aren't coming out as fast as I was hoping they would. Oh, it's all good, Ian. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to get into the habit of streaming more often. But I, some days I just have not been feeling it at all, which is why I just... I just kind of go live on Twitch. Because I don't get a lot of people actually talking over on Twitch, so it's kind of like I can play video games and then just... Um, just kind of focus on random stuff. I'm, I'm more, like, in the mood to play. Like, again, I've been hooked on Dead Cells again recently. There we go. But, you know, it's... YouTube, like, I, I you know, takes more effort. <laughs> I've been doing this thing for so long, though, it's like... Honestly, I'm getting kind of bored. But sometimes I just gotta force myself to do it, you know, and that's kind of how we are tonight.
There we go. Very nice. I love it when he just gets, like, stunlocked like that. Hey, Pure and Darren, welcome back, guys. <clears throat> Simon Belmont appears to have a sore back. Yeah, he is hunched over a little bit. <laughs> Yeah, there's a lot of stuff I need to do in my personal life, which I think will help with things like motivation and, and whatnot. Um, you know, trying to get my health back in order and whatever. And I think if I can do that, then you guys will probably see me here more often. I'll, I'll have more motivation to keep doing this thing. I do want to get better at games I'm, I'm not super familiar with, though, because, like, when you're just live streaming like this, it's very easy to just kind of fall back on the same games over and over, and then that, as much as I love games like Ninja Gaiden and Castlevania and, you know, my NES favorites and whatever, it does get repetitive just playing the same games over and over again. Because, like, I can sleepwalk my way through just about all these games we're going to play tonight. But I do want to break out of my, my comfort zone. Like, the other night I was playing, uh, just messing around on Twitch with Rockman and Forte on Super Nintendo or Super Famicom, and it was like, the first time I had really tried to, like, get into the game, and I ended up going through, like, six of the, uh, Robot Masters, um, without too much effort, like, it was pretty cool. I was like, ah, oh, this game's actually pretty decent. You know, it's notoriously difficult for a lot of people, but I was, uh, making pretty good work out of it, um, so that was refreshing, doing something, like, I wasn't really all that familiar with. So I want to try to do more of that. But it is also time-consuming trying to learn new games like that. Uh, which is why another reason I've been focusing on a lot of the same old, same old stuff, because, like, it takes a whole lot less time for me to do a playthrough of Castlevania than trying to learn something like Rockman and Forte. But yeah, I'm gonna try to keep playing that game. Maybe you guys will see me play it here in a future live stream, or maybe I'll get decent enough at it where I can I can do a quick play. Hey, liberal arts guy, welcome back. And paralysis, welcome back. What's been ailing me lately regarding health problems? Uh, well, last year I had a stent put in one of my arteries because there was a major blockage. Um, and it's been about a year and a half since that happened, close to it. And um, I've started over the last several months, I've started feeling like kind of like really sharp pains in my chest relatively consistently. And uh, it kind of tells me that maybe I'm having cardiovascular issues again. Uh, I already had a uh, issue a year and a half, two years ago, where I had my heart went into AFib and, uh, you know, I had to go to the ER for that and, you know, not particularly fun. I'm still struggling with my diabetes and, uh, you know, cholesterol's through the roof and, uh, yeah, it's, it's things like that, you know. And there are some days where, like, I just don't feel like doing anything. Like, I'll, I'll wake up, like, yeah, I'm gonna, this could be a productive day, and then I sit down on the couch, and I just literally sit there, and then maybe I'll just fall back asleep. <laughs> and that's, like, half my day. Um, so it's, yeah, not, not great. But, like, going, like, today, again, I, I went to the gym. Actually, I haven't been to an actual gym in, like, ten years. I usually just kind of work out out of my home. I have a small weight bench, but I've been really lazy to even do that. You know, I have done some, like, free weight exercises here and there over the last few weeks in particular, but not very, like, strenuous workouts. But going to the gym today, I actually did a lot of stuff that I don't normally do, and that felt really good. So I'm probably gonna try to do that more often on a regular basis. 
My brother actually lives in the same apartment complex as myself, so I went to the gym with him today. You know, I think it, it helps having, like, kind of like a partner. You know, you're both going there for the same purpose and it just kind of keeps you motivated. So that'll definitely help with, like, the health stuff. Alright. I mean, Castlevania is like a ninja Gaiden kind of game for me, where I can just go through the game pretty easily, consistently. I don't ever have to practice this game. Secret money bank you can't get! I love that. <laughs> it's so stupid, but... Alright. Oops! Huh. Did not think I was going to take a hit there, but that's okay. Hey, thank you, Paralysis. I appreciate that. I mean, I'm still here. I'm still kicking, but I could definitely be kicking a lot stronger and harder. <laughs> I want to get back to the point where, like, I'm motivated to wake up, you know? A lot of times I, I wake up and it's just like, I go right back to sleep. And then I wake up again, I go right back to sleep. And I wake up again, I go right back to sleep. <laughs> And then when I feel like it's finally time to get up, I pull out my phone and I sit on social media for like an hour before I actually get out of bed. It's just, it's just really lethargic behavior, you know? Um, so, gotta get my health in, a, in, in order to actually kind of feel motivated to do things again. But it's been, uh, it's actually been really really busy uh, in ways that I wasn't really planning on over the last couple months. Uh, my uh, my dad passed away first week of March and, you know, so I've been kind of dealing with that ever since, you know. The aftermath of, you know, a parent passing um, is a lot of work. And so there's also been that aspect, too. On top of my own stuff, I already have to do and so when it comes to stuff like streaming and whatnot, I've been uh, very unproductive or, or unmotivated, I should say, to do anything that feels remotely productive, which for me would be streaming on YouTube. You know, I get a much larger viewer base here. Like right now, we've got almost 50 people watching. Like I never get that on, on Twitch. You know, Twitch will be like, I'll have five or 10 people watching and zero of them will actually be talking. Um, I feel like more people lurk over on Twitch. But, um... So when I stream on YouTube, it's like, it feels productive, you know? I'm entertaining more people, you guys are keeping me company, and it's, it's, it's a good back and forth, you know? Um... Yeah, I haven't actually told a lot of people about my dad, because, uh... I was gonna save it for, like, a driving vlog or something like that, but... I haven't, like, um... haven't really gone anywhere that's far away, so... <laughs> like, I haven't made a trip to Round 1 since I did my last driving vlog, which was probably, like, eight or nine months ago now. Um... And I don't know when I'm gonna make it back out there again. But, you know, several other people have, have known, you know, because they do follow, like, my social media or, you know, whatever. But yeah, that's definitely a big part of my lack of motivation lately, is like, just having to deal with all the, you know, dad stuff. You know, first week after he passed, I was at my mom's house, uh, at their house, like, every day for like two weeks straight. You know, I got two weeks off work, and just trying to get things settled and organized and... You know, there's a lot of stuff he had that we had to try to figure out, do we want to donate it or sell it or, you know, keep it or, or whatever. And he had, like, multiple vehicles and stuff like that where, you know, we had to try to get transferred and sold. And, and you know, it's just, you know, getting, like, his phone service canceled and stuff like that. It's just a lot of things like that that 
It's a lot of stuff you don't think about. Um, so, you know, I'd be over at my mom's house helping her out with that, and, you know, it's very busy. Very busy, busy, busy. But we're at the point now where it's been long enough to where, like, life is kind of starting to feel like normal again. You know, it's a bit of weird month and a half, but things are starting to kind of feel normal again. Like, I wake up in the morning and I just feel like I did before my dad passed. Just, uh, you know, but that first month and a half in particular was very, uh, very weird. Because I had never had to deal with this before. Um, when it came to, like, my immediate family. Like, I've had aunts and, you know, my granddad passed and what whatnot, but those were people I would see, like, once a year at most. Um, oftentimes less, and so, you know, but my dad and, you know, my mom, they've always lived right across the street from me, so... You know, having to go through that with them has, has been very different, so... I mean, my mom is still alive, kicking, and I think she'll be around for a long time. But, uh... Yeah. <clears throat> Nothing like talking about depressing things while you're playing a depressing game. I love it. It's probably the best time to, to vent about stuff like that. <laughs> I'm in a torture chamber, basically. <laughs> yeah, we are gonna use the, uh, cheap trick on... on the Grim Reaper. Go ahead and grab a hidden money bag, though. I always like this one. Because Castlevania is actually really interesting. It's... I think it's... I mean, this might have been carried over in Castlevania 3, but when you drop in this game, like, you drop really fast. Uh, it's like Simon's got crazy amounts of weight. Whereas if you drop in, like, Castlevania 4, it's... Like, it's, you're just, like, floating in midair, basically, it feels like. So, I like that hidden money bag in particular because you feel that weight as you, you know, you fall to the ground. Hey, Major Havoc, welcome back. Ian says, uh, loss is always weird and hollow. It never feels like you think it would. Yeah, I, that's exactly how it's felt for me. Weird and hollow. Like, I'm, I keep, a lot of, a lot of days I'm like, should I be feeling something, like, I don't know, I don't know how to describe it, should I, should I just be feeling more, and like, I don't feel anything, I just, uh, yeah, I don't know how to describe it, I mean, obviously everyone handles it differently. I also wonder if it's more of, like, a man versus woman thing, because, like, my mom, like, she cried her ass off. <laughs> she still gets really emotional about it, uh... And me, like, I haven't... I mean, yeah, I have cried sometimes, but not like she has. Um, so I don't know, it's just... Alright, there we go. Easy strat. Kira says, I honestly don't see Castlevania as dark or depressing, um, but the music makes it feel more heroic and adventure-like. <laughs> Trev says, you gotta play a happy game next. Uh, Paralysis asks, was your fa father's passing sudden, or has he been sick for a while? So he had, uh, lung cancer two years ago, and then he had surgery for it, and the doctors said that it, they cleared it up, it was gone, and then, I guess over the last year, um, you know, it came back. And by the time they caught it, it was basically just too late, it had already spread to, uh, his lymph nodes, and, um, his liver, and, and pancreas, and whatnot. And then, he refused to get an MRI, like, the substance that he had to drink to get the MRI, he just couldn't 
he was just too out there, like mentally, so he he wouldn't drink it. So the MRIs failed, uh, which basically told everyone that it had spread to his brain, and then he started getting uh, dementia sy symptoms, like really hardcore, to where like we went to see him in the hospital, and he didn't know who we were, his family. Like that was. Yeah, that was the the moment when we all knew that it was basically, you know, it was basically time, and, uh, yeah. So, that was the end of February, and then, uh, you know, he was brought home for hospice care, um, uh, probably, like, I don't know, the 1st of March, and then, uh, eight days later, you know, he, he passed. He had stopped eating, stopped taking all meds and you know once you start stop eating he stopped drinking too um once that happens it's basically you know they have a couple days at most and uh so yeah but yeah it was because of lung cancer he was a lifelong smoker you know he probably started smoking cigarettes at like 15 and um and he was like a pack a day smoker for like the rest of his life and then, even after he had the lung cancer surgery, he eventually got back on the cigarettes. Um... You know, he was always a hard worker. He always, you know, wanted to work and, and try to get the mortgage paid off and whatnot. And, uh, so I think he would use cigarettes as a, a kind of a coping mechanism for working all the time. You know, he'd go out and de-stress with, uh, you know, a smoke, but, yeah, I mean, that's how he got the lung cancer. <laughs> Cigarettes. Alright, Dracula time! So you just want to wait and jump over his projectiles. Let him fire, then jump over. If you jump too early, he actually aims them upwards and will hit you. And I grab the holy water because it'll actually stun the second form. And if you time it right, you can actually get two hits off on him. See, kind of like that. Kind of risky. I always kind of struggle with it. Eh, I'm getting it though. It's not too bad. Oh! Damn it, Drac! Yeah, sometimes he'll just, like, spawn right on top of you. Ooh. I kind of want that. But I also don't want to take a hit. Nice. First try. I couldn't take a single hit there. If I did, then I would have died. Oh damn, sorry to hear that, Tony. I don't think... I don't think you told me that. That sucks, dude. Paralysis, uh, anyone else notice how unusually brutal the first few months of this year were for many people? Yeah, I had actually kind of noticed that too. Like, I have a, a good pinball friend. Uh, they had to put one of their dogs down earlier this year. Uh, it was actually, actually, I think the same week as my dad passed. It was really coincidental. And so, like, we were both grieving for different reasons. And it's like, and I feel like there were other people I knew personally that ended up going through very similar things as well. It was just really coincidental, I guess. Hey, Gimpler, welcome back. Thanks for the GG, guys. Uh, my dad was 71, I believe. Liberal arts guy. So, kind of young. Young-ish. You know, I, I always expect people to live to, like, 80 or 90. <laughs> but... Oh, no, Tony, so he died in a car accident. That sucks. That is extremely sudden. I'm sorry to hear that, dude. Mike says, congrats, you just beat the whippy game. That's what my daughter called it when she was little. <laughs> 
All right, let's uh, let's go ahead and switch games. Gimplish says, man, appreciate the good things while you have them then, right? Yeah. No, I totally. Absolutely. We don't appreciate it until it's gone. Hey, DG. Welcome back. All right. Let's go ahead and do some battle toads. Like I said, I'm going to do the warp zones. And actually, uh, a, a good strategy if you're doing just warp only is to actually play out the first two levels because you can earn uh, quite a few extra lives and then start warping uh, from stage three and on. I guess I'll try to kill these enemies as slow as possible. Try to maximize my points. So if you do your uh, ram attack, you can uh, then use your feet to uh, get some extra points. And then for the uh, smash attack at the end, you'll end up getting 5k. So since I use my feet like that, I got an extra, you know, 1500. Boom, just like that. Every 100k, you get an extra life. So you definitely want to maximize those extra lives if you can. Super Toad. Alright, thanks, Gimpler. I appreciate that. Anything positive going on for me? Um, well, I'm here streaming with you guys. Uh, I currently don't hate my job. And I've got good leadership. <laughs> so it doesn't pain me to wake up for work. Uh, my cats are still doing well. They, uh... Oh, shoot! I knew that was gonna happen. Um, yeah, I mean... Things could be worse. Adam says, I hate this part. <laughs> Come on, it's not that bad, man. Try reading chat while you're doing this, though. It's a little bit harder. That's why I died. I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> I already lost a life. I only have two lives left. Warp zoning is definitely, in a way, it's harder than going through the full game because you get way, way less lives total. Tony says, I love NES streams. <laughs> yeah, I, I thought to myself, if I was going to stream anything on YouTube tonight, NES would probably be good. You know, I could just jump in, play a bunch of games I like. You guys can kind of hang out, and a lot of you guys enjoy the NES, even if it's stuff I've played a thousand times already. Alright, manual jumps now. I like staying on the bottom. I feel like the gap is, is wider. Sorry, more narrow, not wider. Whoa, dude. <laughs> not paying attention. <laughs> Alright, warp, just like that. Alright, we can get a couple extra lives here on Surf City. Oh. Yeah, there we go. Super Toad! Yeah, 
there's one. Yeah, at this rate, I don't think we're gonna actually beat this. Because I've already lost a couple of lives, and that's that's not good. I am using uh, the Retro USB AVS, which is actually in the description of the video. So I'm doing neither. I'm using actual hardware in FPGA form. Availler says, I enjoy watching games he couldn't beat as a kid. Be beaten. Alright. Alright, boss time. You want the stick. Damn it. Try this again. Are you kidding me? Come on. That is garbage. There we go. <laughs> Man, I hate it when I don't get this right away, because... I think the stick will go away if I take too many hits, and then the boss is just a real pain. Oops. There we go. There's another extra life coming up here. So these mines are actually completely random in this version. If you play the Genesis one, which I don't recommend, uh, they are static and have a really derpy pattern, actually. I like the randomness in this one. Forces you to, uh, you know, kind of remain on your toes. Oh! Okay, I almost ran into that. Yeah, I like doing it after I hit the checkpoint. You don't lose a life if you do that. Ooh, Power Blade is one of those ones I want to learn, Trev. Yeah, I've never actually gone uh, through that. DG says, I just mentioned it that the other day, Austin Streams helped me a ton too, dealing with like COVID, cold bull crap. Yeah. Yeah, and I appreciate you saying that, DG, because, like, uh, you know, a lot of people don't tell me, like, that they're even watching, and so it's just kind of like, I see the numbers go up, but it's nice knowing that, uh, you know, the streams do help you, absolutely. Alright, another warp zone coming up here. Dash to the right, and then boom. Neckwear says, uh, as a kid, I never appreciated how technologically impressive this game is. With the animation and scrolling, etc. I just thought it was dumb and too hard. Yeah, a lot of people thought it was dumb and too hard. <laughs> hey, Barone! Barone says, uh, hey Austin, random question. What's your opinion on the Evercade as a platform? Is there anything you find cool about it? Um... Yeah, I don't know if there's really anything cool on it, per se, that I, I really want to go out of my way to get. A lot of it is just stuff I have access to elsewhere. But, you know, it is cool that there's, like, a, a new cartridge-based system out. Um, I had thought about buying one for myself just to do streams of, but it's kind of low on my priority list. Oh, you got to be kidding me. Are you serious? That backfired on me, but yeah, thank you, Barone, for that. I uh, really appreciate that, man. Yeah, one of these years I might get an Evercade. We'll see. Yeah, another thing I actually want to get is the Atari 2600 Plus. Um... Because while I have a soft modded, ah, oh, that sucks. It's gonna make this a lot harder now. Having that stick is really good. Unless you destroy uh, a lot of these enemies and turrets, for that matter. 
Trev says, uh, I've seen you blitz through Mega Man. I bet Power Blade would be pretty easy to learn. Yeah, I was kind of thinking the same thing. But I know Power Blade also... I don't know if it's Power Blade 1 or Power Blade 2, but one of them, I feel like the level design is almost, like, non-linear. Yeah, we'll see how I do with it. Whoa. I will say one of the things that's kind of put me off of the Evercade is I would want to get the uh, consoleized version, the Evercade Versus or whatever it's called. Um, however, some games are locked to like handheld only. Like there's a Namco collection, I think, that looks really good, but doesn't work on the Versus system. Like, really? Why? I don't, I don't know. It's just weird to me. But people that get into the Evercade seem to be pretty happy with theirs, so, you know, maybe one day I'll do it, but, again, a lot of the games are games that, like, I can get elsewhere, or already have elsewhere. I'd be very curious to hear what, oh, crap, some of you guys have to say about the Evercade, if you guys own them, or own any model of it. That's not good. Dead. Yeah! Get the high jump. Based Seraf says, I joined in late. Do you like the Double Dragon and Ninja Gaiden games? Will you consider playing them on stream? Uh, yeah, no, I love those games. I actually, Ninja Gaiden 1 was the first game I played tonight. And I might play a Double Dragon game. I'm not sure yet. Uh, Pure asks, do I uh, still own any arcade boards or cabs? Uh, yeah, I ha still have my Primal Rage cabinet. Uh, and then I own an Avatar Pinball Machine by Stern Pinball from 2000, uh, 2010. That's been, like, my baby over the last six months. Really got that thing cleaned up and playing really well and modded and stuff like that. Uh, and I still have my original Mortal Kombat 1 PCB, JAMA PCB. Can't really use it right now, uh, because I don't have a proper JAMA cabinet. Primal Rage is like JAMA Plus, and it's got some quirks to it. it. Keeps me from being able to swap boards in and out, unfortunately. But uh, yeah, I still have my Primal Rage. I did a uh, I did a quick play on that last year, I believe. Yeah, this is right, this right here is one of the hardest levels in the game. Availer says these streams help me relax after a stressful day. Nice to watch these games being played without actually playing them. I truly appreciate these streams when I catch them. Hey, well, thank you. Um, I'm glad that uh, that they help, man. That's awesome. <laughs> This jump right here is really weird, too. You have to, like, swim up and then just hold the A button. Otherwise, you won't actually make that jump. That was one of those, like, one of the many quirks I've had to whoa, learn with this game. That goldfish normally isn't out like that. You're gonna have to elaborate on modding a pinball machine. Uh, what does that mod provide? It's... It's lots of different mods, uh, DG. From adding toys to the playfield, to make it look a little more exciting, to changing the regular light bulbs out with LEDs, uh, to I have a, a couple of lamp or light boards in my cabinet that smooth out the LEDs so they pulse like traditional light bulbs. Uh, and, you know, it removes potential flicker from the LEDs. 
Uh, there's all sorts of stuff you can do to modify pinball machines. And I've done almost everything I can on this specific machine. It would be hard to elaborate more without, like, having a camera up and being able to point out everything I've done to it. Getting close to the end of this level. Go left. And go here. So far, so good. And I like to just punch right here, because then it keeps me keeps me even. Alright, this is our last section. Thankfully, there's always an extra life right here when you die, so. Even if you die here a bunch, you shouldn't ever really lose any lives. And stupid ducks, some of the most dangerous enemies in the game. Like that. jump over him. Yeah, it's... Fighting those ducks is really inconsistent for me. And I like to preferably get rid of that little goldfish, otherwise he'll, he'll actually follow me through this entire section, which is not any fun. I like to zigzag here, and then come on up. Oh, are you kidding me, stupid shark? Usually, I don't have to actually smack that shark. Okay. It's left, and then right, and then left. Just back and forth. Good to go. Awesome. We got it. Hey, Steve-O. He says, ah, yes, Battletoads. This game made me lose my mind as a kid, and yet it's so fun to play. Yeah, I think everyone that played it for more than a couple of minutes has lost their mind at this game. At least once. Probably a lot more than once. Barone says, I'm loving this music. Hell yeah. I love the music in Battletoads. Alright, so this is the rat race. This one was really tough for me when I first played this game. Oops. Oh, that's not good. Alright, round one. Alright, fall down. Oh, no, no! That... I don't think that's ever happened to me. That was stupid. That is... I've never had that happen. <laughs> and almost again. Jeez. to get an extra life. There it is. <laughs> I earned that lost life back. Man, I definitely don't have this down the way I used to. Hardest one. Yeah, 
the idea is to try to just not touch these platforms uh, if you can avoid it. Got it. First try. Awesome. Alright, so this guy, we just uh, headbutt him. Smack him a few times from behind. You can get behind him and attack. And we eventually have to take him head on. He just speeds up and speeds up and speeds up. And you do not want him to crush you, you will die instantly. Whoa, are you serious? What? That never happens to me. Man, okay. I must not have had my timing right. What was the hardest game for me to learn? Uh... Battletoads? <laughs> Battletoads was one of the hardest games I've ever learned. Um... Uh, I think I had to spend weeks and weeks... Uh, when I When I decided, like, yes, I want to finally beat Battletoads, it took me weeks and weeks and weeks to, to get it. And that was after having already played the game for, like, decades. Battletoads and Battle Maniacs was similar, and actually that was the game that motivated me to try to tackle the first Battletoads. Yeah, in Battletoads, I also did legit, I believe. I didn't use save states. Like, I had three continues, and <laughs> that was it. So, yeah, there were a lot of a, a lot of full restarts. Yeah, so for this level, you have to change your direction when your bike is about halfway, you know, like right on the right on the the middle of the corner, and you have to just hold in the direction that the arrows are pointing. Otherwise, you slow down and that thing catches up with you. Yeah, Availer, some of those, uh, those clone consoles, like the Ambernix, like, they don't have the best D-pads, and so... They're actually really tough. It's really tough to play games like Battletoads on those. You really need an extremely, uh, precise D-pad for this game. Especially on, like, levels like this. He's probably almost dead. Whoa! Crap. Jeez. Oh, lucky. Alright, so we've got at least five levels, and we're on the last level right now. Or five lives, I meant, not five levels. We're in the final stage, and I've got five lives, so we'll see how this goes. This level is just total memorization. Ah, shit. God damn it. 
Yeah, that was stupid of me to try to jump up like that. Quickly. Okay. Yeah, you need to wait. Wait for this lowest platform to spawn. Just like that. That's how a lot of this level is. It's like you just gotta wait. I like to try to headbutt everything here because, like, this is my last chance for extra lives. Um... I don't think there are any, like, straight-up one-ups here. You have to just get them from points. That's a thousand. That's another thousand. Two thousand. So, four grand total. Another 1k? 1k? Really? Another 1k? So that was 5 total. Alright, this should be checkpoint. These guys can eat you in one hit if you're if you're not careful. But same deal, I like to try to headbutt them, get those extra points. I need uh, a little under 50k for an extra life. Another strat is to try to like you can actually end up just destroying like their little air bubbles. And you can just do that infinitely, but it's also dangerous because those air bubbles will kill you uh, in one hit. Where are you going? Oh, nice. <laughs> this is a pretty grueling level. There is a lot to learn on this stage. Um, help? <laughs> that was really weird. Hey, Will, thank you for uh, rejoining. Appreciate that. Hope you're doing well. grab this and just hold on to it. Otherwise we get blown off. It's such a weird level design. <laughs> right, wait for this to spawn and then just jump immediately. Actually, it's this one I'm thinking of. Oh, I've been okay, Will. I've been okay. Grab it on this one, just hold, don't do anything. Don't press anything. Get rid of that guy. Okay, I don't want to push the screen up too far, because if I do, then it triggers this guy. 
And if you're not on these bars, then you just get blown right off. We're almost there. You've got kids now! What kind of excuse is that, Will? No, I'm just kidding. That's awesome, man. That's great news. I hope living the, uh, the daddy life has been interesting. Alright, this is our last section. Boom, got it. Awesome. Hey, Mr. Miles, welcome back. I got cornered. Dude, I hate it when she does that. Uh, it's like nothing you can do. There's my extra life. She actually comes up from the bottom, and you can die if that happens. See it? See, just like that. It's like one last F you. <laughs> Sexiest NES boss. <laughs> Probably. Good old typical rare ending, too. It lasts, like, 30 seconds. Thanks for the GG's, guys. Thank you, thank you. Time to change games. <laughs> All right, good old Mega Man 2. Probably one of my most played games on my channel. Oh man, yeah, no, I I agree. Mega Man 2 definitely has my favorite soundtrack, and 
all of classic Mega Man. Hmm. <clears throat> Alright, see what we can do here. Yeah, Mega Man 3's got some amazing music, too. Definitely. Got it. I love it when I get that. That feels so good. Availer, thank you very much for that. Veiler's 10th Super Chat. That's awesome. I didn't know YouTube even tracked that now. Awesome, Veiler. Thank you so much, man. Very cool. I like that YouTube uh, tracks that. That's, that's nice. Hmm. All right, we're level down. I like going with Quick Man first just because it's, it's more of a challenge. So... Kind of like going to Heat Man. Doing his level without item number two. We'll see if we can do it. I love the use of colors in this game. It's a uh, very colorful game overall. Great uh, visual variety. Battletoads, in comparison, actually has a lot more like muted colors. Whereas Mega Man 2 is just, like, very bright. I love it. It's good stuff. Yeah. the extra life. <laughs> I jumped way too early. <laughs> I'll take that. Thank <laughs> you. 
Serious? Come on, man. How many lives do I have? No easy way out either, since I don't have any of the items. Special items. What did I think of the original box art for Mega Man? I mean... Not very good, if that's what you want me to say. <laughs> oh my god. It's just kind of like one of those memes in, in retro gaming. It's nothing really enlightening I can give you there, Stevo. <laughs> it's it's a box cover, that's for sure. I mean hell, I'm not gonna lie, Mega Man 2's box art kinda sucks too. It's I mean, it's like kind of iconic, like as someone that grew up with it. But on the other hand, when you actually look at it, it looks cheesy as hell. Um, like it wasn't until Mega Man Three that they started getting like Mega Man as we know him today. Yeah, that was close. I got really lucky there. Liberal Arts Guy says, never judge a book by its cover. You're absolutely right. You are, you're absolutely right. Yeah, I really like the box art for, you know, Mega Man's 3 through 6. But yeah, obviously Mega Man 1 is, like, the baddest of the bad. Mega Man 2 is, again, like I said, it's not particularly representative of the game either. Like it was mentioned, Mega Man's holding a gun and just, it just looks cheesy, you know? I'm actually surprised more people don't complain about Mega Man 2's box art. Like, you never hear anybody say bad things about it, but it's really kind of, in my opinion, not all that great either. <laughs> yeah, who knows what they were thinking with the Mega Man 1 box art, but it's just, it's in the past. I don't really care, honestly. I loved Mega Man 1 regardless. I thought it was an amazing game. Um... Trev says, I love pulling around with the Robot Master weapons. I'm still learning neat stuff even 30 plus years later. Yeah, me too. Absolutely. <laughs> it's a box cover. That's for sure. <laughs> I mean, ultimately, DG, it's like, it is just a box cover. I don't really care that much as long as, like, the game is good. So... <laughs> Take the hits. <laughs> yeah, I am showing off a little bit, Trev. I love it though. Like I, I can do it somewhat consistently, so I gotta do it. I gotta show it off.
And if I tank a hit, then I can just, uh, just walk through the next set of drills. Whoa, he just despawned. I don't know why. Glitch Man 2. Yeah, DJ, and the, the other thing, too, is, like, when we were kids, um, you know, we weren't zipping through these levels. Like, we were dying all the time, and, uh, you know, that makes the levels seem a lot longer than they actually are. Constantly getting sent, sent back to checkpoints and whatnot, but, yeah, if you know the levels, you can just really zip right through them. And, and the first two Mega Mans in particular... Like, Mega Man's 1 and 2, you can beat in, like, I think about 40 minutes each. Mega Man 1, I think, is even shorter, maybe, like, 30 minutes. Hey, Banu, welcome back. <laughs> That's a good, uh... That's a good analogy, uh, a Valor. That's pretty funny. <laughs> uh, I'm definitely not button mashing as fast as I normally can. <laughs> Gotta get better at my button mashing. I do not have a second channel with that name, no sir. I actually have many YouTube channels. Probably too many. actually cheese the boss with Heatman's weapon. It's really good. Ow. John says he subscribes to too many YouTube channels. See if I can get this dude do, 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 jump. Nice. I love that. Oop, oop. Ah. Yeah, Trev, I actually think this is probably one of the better levels in the game. It's got a good flow to it, but it's it's very detailed visually, which is nice. You know, you got those trees in the distance. Actually, I probably shouldn't do that yet. <clears throat> I 
<laughs> See, that's actually something I didn't know about until recently. Is, uh, Woodman is weak to Heatman. Heatman's, like, ultimate charge. <coughs> Alright, at this point, I don't really care who I go towards. I guess we'll do Bubble Man. Yeah, back in the day, my friends and I, we would always play this stage first. It feels like a really good starter level. These spikes were also pretty challenging for us back in the day. Yeah, this or Metal Man stage were typical stages we would start with. But nowadays, I just try to do it in whatever order I feel like. It's fun changing the order up, because then you'll have... You know, different sets of sub weapons depending on the order that you do things in. Like, Metal Man's weapon is really good for these toads. You know, since you can aim vertically. But since I don't have that weapon, I've gotta make do with my Mega Buster. Uh, Trev, how do the crabs, uh, differ between those difficulties? the boss patterns in Mega Man 2, they're just fun to fight. Like, I'm trying to, like, actually dodge through stuff, and they're just fun. Fun boss fights. They spit the sh uh, shell at you on the uh, beginner difficulty? That's interesting. I love the, uh, the flashing lights on this level. Mega Man 2 is just, it's filled with, like, really nice little visual touches like this. From level to level. I can just gloat about this game all day long.
get ourselves an E-Tank. Slidey kind of gameplay. Let's go ahead and use that. Yeah, having Metal Man definitely makes that fight a lot easier. Yeah, it's also the, the slidey mechanics are uh, slippery mechanics make that fight a lot harder too. I think it's the only fight in the game with, like, ice physics. Yeah, it's probably one of the only things I don't like about Mega Man 2. It's these screens, like, you can't skip through them. It just slows things down, but it's okay. It's a minor, 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 minor complaint. A little quibble. Whatever. <laughs> Actually, you know what I can do? Have some fun here? <laughs> I actually kind of messed that up. What I wanted to try was to just sit on this conveyor belt. Let's see. Nope, not enough energy. Let's test it. <laughs> yeah, I've never done this before. It's a great idea. Another extra life. times. Just experimenting. Ugh. Regular Buster for Metal Man. I'm just gonna sit back. Actually, I'm gonna go in the middle. This is actually kind of a fun strat. You get close to him and he just goes to the other side. 
<laughs> Usually what I do is I just sit towards the, uh, the far left. It's just so many different ways to play Mega Man 2, it's great. Like on that fight, you can sit on the far left, you can sit in the middle and he'll just bounce back and forth, or you can sit on the far right and he'll just stay on the far left. Alright, last main level. Then it's on to the, uh, the Wily stages. Go ahead and do Metal Man here, just to make my life easier. Since I can shoot in all directions now. kind of shortcut our way through this one. Just like that. Expecting him to fall down. Okay. All right, back to Metal Man. We're gonna have some birds again. Boss time. I could use Airman's weapon. Let's go ahead and do that. Ooh, so powerful. Alright, Dr. Wily stages. Getting close to the end of the game already. The goal tonight was to try to pick games that I could finish off in like 30 to 40 minutes tops. Some of them even even shorter than that. Keep running into that egg. Thinking I'm fancy, yet I keep taking damage.
<laughs> Burgle says, bring back 80s video game music. Right? That'd be awesome. Oh, that's not good. Oh, oh, I did not think I was going to make that. It's not working as planned. You can kind of line these guys up vertically. And then uh, have them drop like power-ups on top of you. But yeah, it's not working. Alright, it's one of the coolest bosses, one of the coolest sections in this game. It's actually the first instance of, I think, auto scrolling in a Mega Man game. And. Potentially one of the first instances of auto-scrolling into platformer on the NES. Yeah, I mean, this was before Super Mario 3. I'm trying to think of other NES platformers that had auto scrolling before that. I'm drawing blanks. Seraph says, uh, in Dr. Wily's level in Mega Man 1, there was auto-scrolling. Um... Uh, no? I mean, there was, like, uh... The, con the conveyor thing you ride. Not conveyor, but sort of, like, the platform you ride. That's not auto-scrolling, no. And you fight the giant bubble machine. Uh, I don't consider that auto-scrolling either, because you're- you're physically being pushed down, like, an icy path or whatever, or maybe it's supposed to be water. That's not auto-scrolling either. That's kind of- you're forced down- like, you try to move backwards and it- it doesn't work. I'm talking, like, the whole screen moves in an automatic manner. Like, I can- I still have free movement, but the screen's gonna keep pushing me forward if I hit the other side, because it keeps moving to, you know, the opposite side. I, I'm trying to- explain it, but... No, I wouldn't consider either of those auto-scrolling. Uh... Not in the same way that it's done in something like Mario 3 or Mega Man 2. never use Flashman's weapon, but it's definitely good to. Alright, they don't need that health. Alright, boss time.
Alright, good deal. Hey, Trav, thank you very much for that. He says, uh, love seeing you mess around with items and weapons. It says apparently this is your first super on the live stream. I feel like... I feel like it's not your first, though. <laughs> but thank you, Trev. Much appreciated, sir. Actually, I probably should try to get some of this weapon energy back. There we go. Yep, change of music. Things get a little more dreary. favorite level and boss. A couple of fun tricks here, though. Uh, you can take uh, bubble lead. And you can drop it on the ground, and it'll tell you where the invisible walls are. Or, not invisible walls, but... <laughs> illusory floors, I guess. That way you don't fall down them. Especially on this part right here. Jump right there. Actually, switching over to Metal Man is probably a good idea. Grinding out for firepower there is actually really tedious. You get to this boss and you don't use your weapon energy appropriately, then you run out and you can't actually do any damage to the boss. But you're kicked back to a checkpoint, which is around here, I guess, and uh, getting the proper weapon energy back is really, really difficult.
So one of the strategies is to try to just get a game over as fast as possible. That way you get all your weapon energy back. Nope, that's not working. <laughs> Just tanking this damage. Got plenty of E-tanks though, might as well use them. Item number one. Not what I was planning on. So that's a nice little strategy right there too. You can actually hit both those doors if, with like the right placement of your your missile. It is longer than the norm, Trev. I think it's just because there's just so much action happening there. You notice the screen starts like uh, flickering like crazy. I wonder if, like, whatever math calculations the game's doing just ends up getting slowed down because of that. And it, like, ends up pushing you farther than it's supposed to? I don't know, I'm just speculating. What I like about the refights is just trying to kill the bosses as quickly as you can. It's funny just, like, zipping right through them. Good stuff, good stuff. Three down. <laughs> I've already got three bosses down. Oh, I don't have uh, Flashman's weapon though. I have to do this like the normal way. doing that. Oh, 
Yeah, that's payback for earlier, Flashman. On to the final, final boss. <clears throat> right, a little speedrun strategy here. You can teleport your way over to the side, and then uh, you just hold right, and none of these things will be able to hit you. Kind of a fun little trick. These things do a lot of damage, too, by the way. I hope they have enough ammo here for this. Got it. Mega Man 2 is down. Hey, Santino, thank you very much for that. I appreciate that. Yeah, such a great game. I, I love uh, the, the Wily reveal at the end. <laughs> it's just very clever. been streaming for about two and a half hours. I think I'll go a little bit longer. <clears throat> I think what I might do is just one more game. That'll put us probably close to three hours and then I can end the stream and then go play some more Dead Cells. Alright, let 
me change templates. Let's see, what do I feel like playing now? Ninja Gaiden, Mega Man 2, Battletoads. I really only played three games? Oh, I did Castlevania as well. That's right. So we've done four games so far. Okay, not too bad. Not too bad. Trying to think of something that, well, you know, you guys had mentioned uh, some Double Dragon earlier, so maybe I'll go ahead and do that. Play a little bit of Double Dragon. Mm, one or two. We'll try Double Dragon 2. I'm not as comfortable with this as I'd like to be because it's got some really BS platforming. All right, well, let's just uh, <laughs> hope for the best here. Uh, we will leave it on the normal difficulty this time, which you don't get the true ending or true final boss, but man, I want to kind of have a try to have a good time here. Double Dragon 2 did this really weird thing where like it reverses your controls based on the side of the screen that you're facing. The arcade version did it too, so that's why the NES version does it. But it always takes a little while to get used to. Let's see uh, how well I can get my knee. Oof. Yeah. Feels good. You press uh, jump at just the right time. And jump is both buttons together. Same with the hurricane kick there. You press jump again midair. One of the safer strategies is just doing like a simple kick and then doing your hurricane kick. You basically just... The guys keel over and you've got time to do your special. A good way to rip through enemies. If you want to just mash buttons, just punching is really good too. It's very powerful. And honestly, weapons in this kind of suck. I don't even bother with them. It's not worth the trouble. Yeah, punching is very powerful in this game. Alright, getting close to the boss fight. Couple more hits and then he's dead. He always does this fake out. That should be it. Yep. And that hurricane kick is really, really powerful. It's not as powerful as like your knee, but it's a lot easier to pull off. And so, safer strategy is just to use the hurricane kick. Actually, it was probably good I didn't do the knee. I might have actually jumped into a pit by accident. Alright. 
stuck immediately. Oops. I was trying to do my hurricane kick, but it wasn't working. All right, see you, logarithm. Take nut. Take care. Have a good night. There we go. The timing on that is so strict. And again, hurricane kick for the win. <clears throat> Based says that they were never able to beat Double Dragon 3. That game was ridiculously difficult. Yeah, I think I've only ever beaten that game twice. And every time I, I try to get it consistently, it just doesn't work. It's such a difficult game. And it's, it's mainly just that last level, too. The levels leading up to it really aren't that bad. Woo! Uh-oh, that's not good. Okay, there we go. Yes! <laughs> it's so powerful. <laughs> it feels so good if you can get that move. Yeah, Darren, that's a way to get extra lives in the beginning. Yeah, you start the two-player game, uh, and you kill the second player, you get their lives. Yeah. I used to do that when I was a kid, but I don't, I don't do it anymore. I found I don't need it, but it is a fun little trick. Yeah, if you mash the punch button as you get up, you can do like a super uppercut. Pretty handy for this part, because you can't jump here. Uh, the ceiling is full of spikes, and so you take damage, and you get knocked down if you try to jump. Surprised he fell for that. Mm -hmm. 
You got a Milo cat joining me right now. You guys can't see him, but he's right in front of me. <laughs> he just jumped up on my desk and is staring at me. He wants some pets. Good boy, Milo. If you guys want to see Milo, you can uh, check out my Instagram. Which I think I have uh, linked in the uh, description box. Yeah, so far the run hasn't been too bad. I haven't- I don't think I've died yet. Um... But that can end very, very quickly as there's a lot of platforming from here on out. And I always like to take the bottom path here. God damn it. Ugh, that sucks. I hate losing lives like that, because you lose them instantly. And you do have finite lives in this game. There's not really any way to earn extra lives, like, legitimately. No, no score extends, as far as I'm aware. Beast says, I really like the vibe of the stream. It reminds me when I was a kid in the 90s playing these games with my friends. Yeah, I've had a lot of people say that over the years. This is kind of an interesting part. I need to try to get up top as fast as possible. Oh, I messed that up. Alright, got it. So, fun little strategy with this guy. You can just kind of like hurricane kick him from below. I messed it up. But you can do it that way too. Screw you, fake Arnold. There we go. That's it. Alright, this level has a lot of nasty platforming. Shoot, I messed that up big time. Damn it. I'm trying not to get hit by the fire on the left. Ugh. Yeah, a lot of times this is where, like, my runs go to die. If you stay in the middle here, you can attack enemies from both sides. Trev says, uh, Double Dragon Trilogy or TMNT Trilogy? Um... 
Man, you know, honestly, Trev, I think I would argue a uh, Double Dragon Trilogy. I think part of it for me is that while I like TMNT 2, the arcade game, the combat's just not very interesting. Uh, you don't really have many different attacks and stuff like that. Whereas each of the three Double Dragons feel pretty different from each other, but they've got similarities at the same time with how the combat feels and, and whatnot. The wider variety of moves. Plus, Team T One's not really, it's not like a beat 'em up it's more like a side-scrolling action game. Um, so it is kind of apples to oranges in a way because of Team T One, but I think I find myself playing the first three Double Dragons more than the first three Team and T's, like as the years go on. Come on, man. I'm trying to do the uh, uppercut. It's not working. There we go. You gotta kill this guy before the uh, platforms disappear. Otherwise, you are dead. Oh, so lucky. Can't believe I'm getting this. So you're saying there's a chance. Alright, we're safe. Next level is the last level. Huh. Interesting. They can go up the Z-axis with their jumps. I didn't know that. Oh, come on. Jeez, man. I don't normally have that much trouble with those guys. Oh my god, I'm taking so much damage. I never take this much damage here. What's not helping me is I've got enemies on both sides of me, and normally, like, you want to keep them on one side of the screen. <laughs> Sucks. I'm not timing my attacks right, either. Oh, come on! 
Alright, screw this. I'm not continuing. <laughs> that was garbage, man. Losing lives to, like, just basic grunt enemies like that is not good. I mean, they didn't even give me a continue, either. Jeez. Ugh. Yeah, that was, uh, that was a bad ending to an otherwise okay run. Man. Alright, we'll do one more game. Yeah, Lady Synth says, I always found the controls in this game to be weird, not just the reversal thing, but the hurricane kick always seemed to kind of, seemed kind of hit or miss as to whether I'd be able to do it. Yeah, the, the thing with those special moves is the timing is, like, really strict and tight. Um, the hurricane kick's not nearly as bad as, like, the knee, but it's, uh, yeah, even on that run, I was struggling to do it sometimes, just the hurricane kick. Like, a lot of times when I would jump and just do a regular jump kick, like you guys saw, I was actually me trying to do the hurricane kick, but, you know, my timing was off. So, yeah, it's definitely uh, hit or miss for sure. And then you, you know, add to that, like, all the weird platforming and stuff later on in the game. And, like, even my jumps can be hit or miss, like, because you have to press both A and B together. And I'll, like, miss a jump or, you know, and I'll just fall off a platform and die instantly. So, yeah, it's very, very hit or miss. All right, I'm trying to think of something that's probably quick and easy to play. And I think what is going to happen is we're probably going to do some Super Mario Brothers to end the stream. This will probably be our last game because it is uh, midnight already. I do work in the morning, but I will be up late uh, today or this morning or tonight. I can't even talk, can't even string words together. Uh, cause I did sleep all day today, <laughs> so it's going to be, it's going to be a long night, but I'm also not going to get much sleep before I have to actually wake up for work in the morning, which is going to be a bummer, but yeah, it is late. I do want to get at least a few hours of dead cells in tonight. All right, Trev, take care, man. Thanks for the super chat earlier and thanks for hanging out. It's good to see you again. Hope you're doing well. And, uh, all right, here we go. DG says, and on that note, good night, everyone. Really great stream, Austin. Thank you, DG. Have a good night. Sleep well. Um, you know what I should have done is actually loaded up a save state for this, uh, but it's okay. We'll just do the regular game. Oh. Probably help if I turn the volume up. <laughs> All right. Yeah, good kind of chill game to play uh, for the end of the stream. If I had started streaming earlier, I would definitely go to, like, the four or five hour mark. But since it's so late, I'm going to do the three hour mark and kind of in there. We're at uh, two hours and 48 minutes so far. That's almost three hours of gameplay. How's everybody doing right now? I know it's late. I mean, for some of you guys, it's still early, because you're on the West Coast. Or for us East Coasters, it's, uh, it's getting a little late. Santino says, one game I could never get sick of watching someone play. <laughs> this is one, one game I can never get sick of playing. 
Am I going to take a warp zone? I think I'm gonna try to do a full run. Oops. It's getting a little fancy there. Got a cat next to me. He's like, he's like gnawing on my arm. <laughs> it's making it a little awkward to play as well. Getting distracted. What's up, little buddy? You just want attention, don't you? It's easier to give him attention in between levels. <laughs> Not during the levels. Yeah, I've got some other stream ideas lined up. Oh, god damn it. Milo, all right, you gotta get down, bud. Down. I took a hit there because, like, he nibbled on me. Ugh. I, uh, like, like I was about to say is, uh, I do have some other stream ideas lined up. I just have to find kind of, like, the motivation to do them. Like, tonight's stream was not a planned stream. It wasn't one of those, like, topic ideas I had been wanting to try to do for a while. Um, but I do have some topic ideas, like one of them is doing a Genesis Mini 2 stream, because I did get one of those early this year. Oops! Man, I'm playing really poorly right now, oh my god, Mario Brothers, or Super Mario Brothers is like one of my best games on the system. <laughs> I am really distracted right now. But yeah, Genesis Mini 2, um... I'm gonna do the original Legend of Zelda since I, uh, ran through that again about a month and a half ago. What else was I gonna do? I thought I had some more stream ideas. <laughs> uh, I was gonna do the, uh, Atari Game Station Pro. I may, I may still do that. We'll see. I still have it for the time being. Which version of Super Mario Brothers do you like better? This version or the Mario All-Star version? Uh, I prefer this version. Yeah, I, th I think it just uh, plays better. It's really fast and snappy. They changed the physics in the uh, All-Stars version of Super Mario 1, but, I mean, it's still great. I still love the All-Stars version. You know, you can save your progress. I really like the graphical updates. It, it, it looks really nice and colorful. But generally, from a gameplay standpoint, I, I much prefer this version. Like, it's a faster game. Darren says, I recently bought another pinball machine. 1975 Magic by Stern. Very cool, man. I mean, Mario 2 and Mario 3 on All-Stars actually feel almost identical to the NES games. Um, but it's, it's Mario 1. And subsequently, the Lost Levels. You know. Mario 2 and 3 are actually, you know really good versions. I mean, Mario 1 is still a, a really good version, too. It just, again, it just feels different from the NES game. You know, you get used to it, and it, it's still fine. It's still a great game. Yeah, I don't think I've ever played Magic by Stern. Uh, I have played a lot of the Sterns from that era. I actually owned one uh, for a little while. Yeah, I don't think I've ever actually played Magic. 
Well, I've actually owned quite a few old solid states and a couple of electromechanical machines over the years. So I'm very familiar with the gameplay. You know, I'm a... I do play tournaments and stuff like that, so when you are playing at a higher level, like, you have to be good on all eras of machines. But I like that era of Stern in particular. Those games are... they've got cool layouts and they're... they tend to be pretty fast. Already on to World 3. No extra life here since I didn't take any warp zones. mess that up. It's so hard for me to get the turtle trick. The one-up trick. I wish Nintendo would bring back Mario 35 on the Switch. I loved that game so much. <laughs> Steve-O says, I'm glad I have Super Mario Bros. in his collection. Or in my collection. Me too, Steve-O, me too. <laughs> I mean, you really can't own any NES cartridges without having Super Mario Brothers. It just doesn't feel right if you don't have it. You gotta have it. Yeah, Darren, they use the, the same ballet boards, yep. Yeah. You can get the, uh, the Alltech replacements. Which is highly recommended on games of that era. Jason says, I really enjoyed tonight's stream. Thank you very much, Jason. Yeah, I had fun playing these games. It was, it was a nice uh, refresher for me. Actually, recently, uh, I've been playing a lot of other random stuff on stream, like, been doing more PS5 stuff, like on Twitch. I've uh, been doing... Did some original Xbox stuff last night. Did Neo Geo CD the night before. Did uh, some Game Boy, some Super Nintendo. That was nice. Play nice playing some NES again. <sighs> what are my thoughts on Zelda 2? People say it's the black sheep of the series, but I really like it. Uh, I really like it too. It's one of my favorite Zelda games, actually. It wasn't really the black sheep of the series back in the day when, you know, there weren't only there were only a handful of Zelda games out. You know, you had the two on NES, you eventually had the Game Boy one, and then the Super Nintendo one. Um I don't think it started getting that reputation until later on in its life. 
Okay, that'll take me to a warp zone. I'm not gonna actually do that. Oh, oh no. No, did I glitch the game out? Oh, you gotta be effing kidding me. <laughs> this has never happened to me before. <laughs> Raiding Lords is Breath of the Wild as the Black Sheep of the series? No, definitely not. <laughs> Breath of the Wild is an amazing game. Yeah, so that block below me uh, made a vine appear, but I think I pushed it just off screen, and the idea was to try to jump up and take the top route. But yeah, Zelda 2, I think, is an awesome game. It's a great game, especially for NES. Like, there are very few 8-bit games with that sort of, like, gameplay feel and depth. I mean, one of the things about Zelda 2, though, is that it is a challenging game. It's, it's, I'd say it's easily the hardest Zelda game. You know, both Zelda 1 and 2 require, like, eye-hand coordination skills and, you know, being able to play well. Very little hand-holding in those games. I only have six lives. I'm gonna have to change that. Yeah, so about a month and a half ago, I beat the first Zelda again for the first time in quite some time. And, uh, oh, god damn it, come on. Yeah, it was a fun experience. Like, it was, it was challenging at parts. Fudge. Ugh. Yeah, so I want to try to stream that again sometime soon before I completely forget it. <laughs> Before I forget everything I just learned again. Yeah, like, maybe we'll try that next weekend. Try to do some OG Legend of Zelda. That's what I was trying to do in the last life. Oh god, I almost... <laughs> almost fell down that pit. Uh... Yeah, if you're not careful, the first Super Mario Brothers can still get a little stressful. Think of other NES games I want to actually try to buckle down and learn. I need to like make a list and start trying to work at them. 
Yeah, I know the Power Blaze I want to try to do eventually. Battletoads and Double Dragon would be cool. Never finish that. Oh, didn't make it. Uh, Kickmaster's another one. I just need to make a list of this stuff, though, and just start, like, trying to chop away at them. Uh, no, I know Metroid 1 very well. We actually did a live stream of that, uh, not too long ago. Yeah, so, I don't need to play Metroid 1. I've already got that one down. Actually, I have multiple stream archives of that, on, of that game on my channel now. Uh, Raiden Lord, I don't know about Rygar. Every time I try to play it, I just get bored so quickly. It's one of those games that, like, a bunch of people like, but I just can't seem to really get into. You know, honestly, if I'm gonna try to relearn a game that's, like, non-linear, uh, I think I'd actually like to try to tackle Battle of Olympus again. Because years ago, I had some friends here on YouTube, like, ask for me to stream that, and I never got around to relearning the whole game. And I haven't beaten the game since the early 2000s. Oof, Bucky O'Hare. Yeah, that one, that's a rough one. That's extreme, like, trial and error, memorization. It's very, very difficult. I, every time I try Bucky O'Hare, like... It's another one of those ones I lose interest pretty quickly because it's, like, it's very frustrating, and... I'm like, do I want to really put myself through this? <laughs> it's a game I could definitely beat eventually, but it's it's a battle to its level of difficulty. Yeah, like, it's one of the hardest games on NES, I would say. Same with Holy Diver. That's another one I, I wanted to try to finish, but it's also very, very difficult for all the wrong reasons. Uh, I haven't done Faxanadu in a long time, though, Vampire. I had thought about trying to do another run of that. Or Tony. <laughs> he goes by Vampire on Twitch. Um, I, uh, I know Aberdeen would like to see another run of it. And honestly, Aberdeen, if you're out there listening... I'll do facts and I do just to get you to shut up. <laughs> Every stream, he's like, "Where are you playing facts and I do? Where are you playing facts and I do?" It's like I've already played facts and I do. Stop it. <laughs> but no, it's been so long since I did my last playthrough of it. Like I could see myself doing another. Oh, I love Silver Surfer, man. I've got multiple playthroughs of that on my channel. TMNT1? <laughs> uh, I actually played a little bit of TMNT on Twitch a few weeks ago, and I actually made it uh, pretty far into the game on my first try. So yeah, that is one I'd like to eventually actually be able to finish. Yeah, Silver Server is actually one of my favorite shooters on the system. That's a game that gets kind of, like, a bad rap. It's a bad rap because it's just, it's tough and people don't want to learn it and get good at it. But it's a lot easier to get good at than something like Bucky O'Hare. Silver Surfer is, it's pretty moderately paced. It's not a super fast game. Friday the 13th, nah, I don't think that's happening. I think I'm, I think I'm just going to give up on Friday the 13th. It's... It's a lot to learn, and just getting the run consistent is really tricky. I got really close to beating that game uh, in the early 2000s. Got to Jason on day three. You know, if you do that day three, then you win the whole game. 
Guardian Legend, I might, but... I don't really want to spend time learning these longer games, though. I want to I wanna focus more on, like, the shorter action games. So I can actually turn those into, like, quick plays and stuff like that. The longer games, they take longer to learn, and... You know. I want to be able to crank out some content again, while still learning some, you know, some things in the process. So, less long games, more short action games I haven't ever finished. If you learn uh, Guardian Legend, you can beat it in like an hour and a half. Okay, I didn't realize it was that short. Ah, uh, Seraph, yeah, just go back to my list uh, of videos and live streams and... I have playlists as well. Like, I have playlists of just NES content, so if you have any questions about, you know, what I've played before, you can just check out the playlist and that'll be mostly everything. Yeah, I mean, I've got over a thousand videos and, and live streams, so there's actually a lot of stuff I have played here, and I've done a lot of variety streams as well. And some of the longer games, I won't do that often. Like, I'll do them once, and then <laughs> seven years later, maybe I'll do them again. Um, so, like, right now, I think I have one original Legend of Zelda stream, two Zelda 2 streams, um, and, like, that's it for those. Um, because they're longer games, you know, I don't want to just cover them over and over and over again. But it is getting to the point now where it's been so long since I've done some of those games that it's, you know, I think it's okay for me to do them again. Because there are a lot of new subscribers that I have since I last did those games. And it's nice giving people a chance to actually actively participate in, like, a live playthrough of the game. As opposed to just watching an old stream archive. Dragon Warrior 3, hell no, I'm not doing any of the Dragon Warrior games. <laughs> not even the first one, which I grew up with, it's just... No, oh, can't do it. <laughs> Zed says Friday the 13th is BS, even with cheats. <laughs> yeah, there are strategies in Friday the 13th, you definitely want to get, like, the sweater, you want to get... Like, the pitchfork and, you know, other better weapons. But it can definitely be a grind. And it can get a little repetitious, too, because of, like... You're constantly having to go back and forth to save the children and blah blah blah. Uh, I have a full playthrough of Little Samson on my channel, yeah. I actually didn't care for that game that much. I actually came out learning that one, I came out kind of angry. I was like, ugh. The last level in particular is insanely frustrating. Might revisit it, because it has been a long time now, but uh, I remember not really enjoying it that much. It's one of those hyped up NES games I just uh, didn't really appreciate that much. It's possible I could have learned some parts better. Which is why revisiting it might not be a bad idea. It's a, it's a really old Let's Play of mine now. Oh, messed that up. Uh, Jason, I did not beat Rad Racer, no. I think I got pretty far into it on a live stream, but I have never finished Rad Racer. Yeah, Rad Racer is really fun, but it's also really, really hard. Uh, Raiden Lord, I did a Let's Play of Wanpaku Graffiti many years ago. Uh, and I did play a little bit of Kid Dracula on one of my, like, Castlevania Anniversary Collection streams, but I've never actually finished that game. 
That game gets pretty annoyingly difficult, and I just was like, nah, I don't have the patience for this right now. <laughs> I actually wonder how the Game Boy version of Kid Dracula stacks up. I have a uh, backlit Game Boy now with a flash card, so maybe I'll try that. Road Blasters! Uh, I wouldn't do like a dedicated playthrough of Road Blasters, because there's no way in hell I'll ever beat that game. That's, you know. Um, but I do like the game. It is, Road Blasters is pretty good. I might even, I don't, I don't think I actually have it on any of my variety streams here, but, it, you know, I'll definitely, you know, pop it in uh, on one of these variety streams in the future. Oh my god! Why did that turtle turn around? You weren't supposed to turn around, dude. <laughs> Oh man, I love uh, Karate Kid and Jaws. I'm actually tempted to play Jaws real quick before I end the stream. I did just do a quick play of it, uh, as I just recently learned that game. <laughs> what am I doing? Uh, still got five lives, too. Yeah, Jaws is a fun game when you know what to do in it. Karate Kid's a little more janky, but it's, uh... There's rhythm and rhyme to that game as well. Oh, I know why the turtle turned around. He ran into one of the cheap cheeps. You know, maybe I can, like, squeeze in both those games. Uh, I mean, there's plenty of playthroughs of Swords and Serpents online, not on my channel, but they're definitely out there for sure. All right, World 7-4, I always forget the pattern. This is one of those puzzle, puzzle levels. <laughs> wow, lucky shot. <laughs> Whee! You can be Jaws in like 10 minutes. <laughs> it's not even 30. Ugh. Yeah, I think on my recent quick play of Jaws, I think I ended up beating the game in like 15 minutes. Ended up beating Jaws at a pretty low level. He just wouldn't leave me alone. And so, yeah. I got rid of him before even getting the submarine. Oh, nice. My quick play motivated you to learn it? Hell yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, it's a pretty fun game. When you know what you're doing, it's pretty fun. Nice little short, easy to pick up and play kind of game. Not expecting that. See, normally, like, I would have uh, fallen to the right, not into that pit, but I think because the enemy was there, it, like, messed with the physics. I ended up getting, like, just propelled backwards. Yeah, this run is definitely not going as smooth as my Super Mario runs usually go. But that's okay. There was a mushroom in one of those blocks, but a little risky with all the uh, bullet bills. Tickle, tickle, tickle. 
Back to the Future was the worst game. Jaws is actually a great game compared to Back to the Future. Yeah, yeah. Jaws is one of those I don't really understand people's beef with. I think it was just because, you know, AVGN and whatnot. Um, yeah, Back to the Future is one of those that's like... I know it's possible to actually, like, learn that game, but... It's... it's pretty tedious. And the music is just... Ugh. Jaws, on the other hand, has some catchy tunes, it's, you know, it's fairly well polished, it plays well. All the collision works well, it's, you know, it's, oh my god, alright, I wanna kill myself here. What about trying some really janky games like X-Men or Athena? Well, I grew up with X-Men, don't really care for it, but, yeah, it is super jank. Athena, um, played a little bit of, but... I don't know. I mean, I mean, one thing I could do technically is just do like a janky NES stream, but I'm not sure that would be a happy stream. <laughs> I'd be forcing myself to play a lot of games that really aren't all that great. There's some bad patterns here, man. Oh my god, I did it again. Really bad patterns here. Well, that was weird. Made the sound twice. Uh, well, Adrian, you shouldn't even ever play Sky Shark because it's got some of the worst collision detection on NES. Like, you'll die from bullets at, I swear, like halfway across the screen. <laughs> it's it's pretty jank, not in a good way. Um. Abadox is a legitimately difficult game, but, you know, you can, it's a memorizer. Once you get it down, you can get through it pretty consistently. Um, I mean, any of games that gave me the most trouble... I mean, Abadox is, is definitely up there, especially from back in the day. Um... Silver Surfer gave me a lot of trouble for a long time. Um, uh, Battletoads was one of my best accomplishments, like, finally finishing that game. Jesus Christ, why are you guys hovering on the bottom two platforms? You got One of them's got to jump all the way up, and I, I can't get through this. Like, basically what I'm doing here is I'm trying to get the Fire Flower, which makes the last level a hell of a lot easier. And they're just giving me a really bad run right now. Really bad randomness. RNG. <laughs> Santino mentions Jekyll and Hyde. I actually learned that game legit. It didn't even really take me all that long. I have a, a good friend of mine over on Twitch, uh, speedruns Jekyll and Hyde, and so, like, I'd watch a lot of his stuff and learn the tricks. There we go, this is a little bit better. My god, that was really frustrating, because they kept doing the same thing for multiple lives. And that doesn't normally happen. Normally, like, I can start as small Mario and get the Fire Flower in first try. Yeah, having a fire flower makes this last level and, or two so much easier. Yeah, I actually have a full playthrough here of Jekyll and Hyde. I, did, I have a full Let's Play of it. So if anyone actually wants to know how to play that game, you can refer to that video. Um... But I mean, as far as NES games that are giving me the most trouble, I mean, we can talk janky stuff like Sky Shark. I don't even think about games like that. Um, for me, I think about games that are like actually really playable, but I mean, if I really wanted to, I could throw out a ton, like a huge list of NES games that are too jank to really even be playable. Like, 
Ikari Warriors. Um, Sky Shark, Ikari Warriors, you know, stuff like that. But for me, like, the games that I've actually finished that gave me a lot of trouble are, are games like Silver Surfer and Abadox, Battletoads in particular. I don't really have many other games on the system that are, like, at that level in terms of difficulty and... or difficulty to learn. Uh, I like Gremlins 2. Yeah, Gremlins 2 is actually a really solid game. I have... <laughs> ...have a Let's Play of that game as well. Actually, I might just have a long play of that one. I might not have actually did a Let's Play. I think I did a long play with post-commentary. I don't think I ever revisited that in Let's Play form, but I meant to. Have I played Rambo? Uh, yeah, I've, I've played a good bit of Rambo over the years. I've never finished it, but yeah, I have played it. I told myself that was going to be the last game, but since we're talking about a couple of really short LJN games, I think I'm going to actually mess around with them. And uh, both these games I have Let's Plays of. All right, Karate Kid. It's only got four levels, and the first level is basically a nine level. So for this one, what we're gonna do is just... How do I do this? That's right, forward kicks. Planet X is like, guess I'm late to the party. You are definitely late to the party. This party is almost over. If you press B by itself, you do your crane kick, which is a limited use item, so I have three left. So if you do forward kicks, then you don't use your crane kicks. Here we go. Alright, and the idea here is to just let enemies constantly spawn. Every few enemies, you'll get a crane kick, or a drum punch, depending on if you're killing enemies with, you know, your your fists. See? There's another one. I prefer just doing the kick, because it's good range. And then every time you get one of these items, you get some health back, too. So if I take a hit, I can just easily get my health back. This is really the key to the game. Once you do this, you can get through the later parts so much easier. I do like some of the music in the game, too. Santino Codenight Viper is pretty cool. It's one of the few rolling gunner and uh, rolling thunder, sorry. Rolling gunner is a modern schmuck. Uh, rolling thunder and shinobi types of games. One of the very few on the console. But I remember it being very difficult as well, and the checkpoints are few and far between. But I like what I've played of it. I've got a couple levels into it. 
That's one of those ones that gets a bad rap, probably because people just have barely touched it, you know? Alright, um, uh, I've got 19, 20, let's go ahead and just keep playing. There are lots of, uh, hidden bonus rooms, and you'll get more of these, uh, abilities, um, by completing these. Nice. Uh, Seraph, I mean, so what I'm doing right now with, like, building up crane kicks and whatnot, you end up just using those on the last level. You don't use any regular attacks on the last level. You just have a stash of crane kicks built up. That's really the key to the last level. And any enemy that's below you, you're gonna use the crane kick as well. But yeah, once you figure that out, the last level is actually pretty easy. Some of these doors don't actually have bonus levels, or the entrance to the bonus level is in like a really weird spot. Swinging hammer. That's right, I'm supposed to turn around. <laughs> and the swinging hammer is always the toughest one. Now that extra life. Wow, that appeared really high. I couldn't even grab that. Nice. That's actually really hard to do. But it's worth doing it if you can, because you got all those bonus uh, attacks. And these bosses, you can literally just use your crane kicks. <laughs> Look at that. Super easy. Alright, this level is definitely a step up difficulty-wise. With the winds, there's a lot more, like, endless pits. Alright, the flycatch is probably the easiest one to get. We go. Yeah, and anyone that's below you, you want to end up just using your crane kicks.
Okay, now's a good time to just grind out. Now I can get my health back. Constantly pushed back here, too. All right, fly catch again. All right, got it. Ice block break. This is our first one. This one's kind of weird. Ooh, first try. Like, your character breathes in, but you also have that power meter, and both have to kind of line up. It's, it's a weird one. Nice. That's actually a really tough part right there. Because of how, like, the respawning enemies are constantly coming in. Woo! Another one. It's, that's very rare for me to, to get that. I'm gonna fall down. <laughs> it's really dangerous. If I get knocked back, I'm gonna get blown backwards into into one of these pits. Like the enemies are doing. Damn, again. That's three times now. That's awesome. No, I'm not tassing my way through this. <laughs> I'm actually getting it, which is kind of crazy. I've never actually used a task before. That would be so weird. Yeah, the great thing about these games is like you can learn the mechanics and like just get them down, get good at them. That's what's satisfying about these old games. You can learn them. Games that seem impossible, you can get good at them. Yeah, this is our last level, so again, you want to just use your crane kicks and drum punches. And these have bonus levels too. Did I know that there's a Cobra Kai ROM hack of this? I did not, but it doesn't surprise me. go. Ice block break. Got her. Good. That gives me health back. Swinging hammer again. Damn, man. Three might be our record. <laughs> Yeah, now these guys take two hits if you're trying to kick them. Swinging hammer again. Nice. 
Oh. That's gotta hurt. That doesn't even look like a hammer. That would look like that would uh, impale him. <laughs> Game over. Yeah, running a little low on crane kicks. So I want to like, you know, try to even out the, the use of my specials. Do some drum punches, do some crane kicks. But this is uh, nearing the final boss. No, you're not supposed to go off. <laughs> I was too close to her. Oh, that was my fault. I have so many lives left, though. Yeah, unfortunately, I don't have that many specials left, though, which is going to make it really difficult. Yeah, the thing about this, though, is that you can really spend all the time you want grinding out on specials. Yeah, you have to sit back on the left plat left side of the platform, otherwise that lady, she walks off the ledge and then dies. And that's it. So, you know, what I usually recommend people do is just grind out as long as you can on the first level. <laughs> grind up to 99 crane kicks for all I care. <laughs> uh, having those makes the last level like a, a cakewalk. So... And yeah, one of the most pathetic endings on NES. But yeah, that's Karate Kid. So, even though I did a quick play of this one a couple weeks ago and posted it, uh, I'll go ahead and play through this again. And this will officially be our last game for tonight. And it will be Jaws. Again, this one you can beat in just a few minutes. I mean, unless I feel like playing another game I can beat in a few minutes, like I can fire up Trojan. <laughs> do, 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 do. All right. So Jaws, you just, uh, kill lots of stuff. And as you kill stuff, you get shells. Shells are currency. I actually got a couple of really good comments on my quick play of this game, like detailing some of the other features in the game. Much of which I've already forgotten. <laughs> but I think, uh... I think for your first seaport, you don't actually have to go all the way across the map. You can just re-enter the first seaport, so I'm gonna try that. After I've got some shells here. No, it's not working. What platform is this? Uh, it's in the stream title. <laughs> it's Nintendo Entertainment System. NES.
Oh, you know what? I just realized that the crabs speed you up. I did not know that. I'm going way faster now. Little shark. Uh, Raiden Lord, yeah, you trigger the bonus stages somehow. It might be the, uh, stars. But yeah, when I picked up the crabs, I definitely sped up. Like, I was going really fast. I'm gonna have to go back and refer to my video and, uh... Yeah, I've referred to the comments on my video, I should say. Because there are some games like this, I don't really pay attention to some of the mechanics, because I just feel like they're kind of unnecessary in terms of, like, just being able to beat the game. Do I need to know what the crabs do? Not really. Do I need to know what the stars do? Not really. All I need to do is just get shells and survive. Yeah, no, it's not letting me do that. So I do have to actually go all the way across. Looks like Jaws is right around the corner as well. There's the big boy. I'm not even gonna bother attacking him. I'm just I'm way too weak right now. And he gets so much of his health back in between levels. Or in between uh, encounters with him. We got the tracker. All right, Jaws, go away. This one I read that like you can just go back to the same port, but apparently not. Also, now I'm not really sure what triggers the bonus levels because I got the stars. Oh, I didn't get any crabs though. Maybe the crabs are the ones that trigger the bonus ages. Maybe the stars are the things that speed you up because I think I feel like I'm going a little bit faster now. Ah, uh, who am I kidding? It doesn't really matter. <laughs> Just play smart, survive, build your energy, then go after Jaws. That's all you need to do. really close. Huh. You really do not want to die in this game. You get downgraded so badly. Hey, let me stay higher up. Oh, God! I'm an idiot. Terrible. So we lost half of our shells. We have to do that all over again.
All right, so I got the crab. We'll see if we get the bonus stage after this. level. Yeah, so I guess it is the crabs. God, crabs? Adrian says the manual says the bonus agents are just random. increase your speed. Okay, so I was right about the speed thing earlier. I guess that means stars are just points? This could end poorly. Yeah, the shallow depths are the toughest parts to deal with, especially if you've got Jaws in the same screen. Thank you. Huh. Got some power. Level raised. Power up. Power up. Now I want to play some Altered Beast. shells, that's good. Jaws, come on, man. Leave me alone. I'm trying to grind out and level up, please. I'd also like to get the submarine for once. Jaws, Justin, what a hug. Even big sharks need loving, too.
Zed, the bonus music is definitely relaxing, for sure. Ugh. Okay, now I'm fine. Oh, that was close. Seraph, I, I loved Nintendo Power. I was a longtime subscriber. I still go back and read some of the old magazines just because, like, it's an interesting time capsule, but, like, some of... I don't know. It just makes me feel good when I read that stuff. I remember, uh, you know, once a month I'd come home from school and there'd be a brand new issue and, like, that would be my afternoon, was just reading the new the new magazine. I didn't read books growing up. I read Nintendo Power. <laughs> I think the sub should probably appear. And yeah, Adrian, you're right. Uh, the instruction manual kind of reads like a walkthrough of the game, and a bunch of the uh, bunch of game manuals were like that back in the day. But we would either borrow games from friends, or they would have thrown out the manuals, and or you'd rent the game from like a video store. And so a lot of these games you'd be playing without instructions. And, but the instructions are pretty important. Every time I do a quick play of an old game like this, I try to refer to the instruction manual to make sure there's nothing like I'm missing. And there are some games I've played that actually taught me a couple things. going on for a while. I see the submarine. Let's go get it. Power up. Top right. So with the submarine, you got multiple attack types. Ah. Multiple attack types, and then um, it's also a lot faster.
There we go, I got it. I've hit Jaws. This might be it, guys. I'm at power level 5, which is pretty decent. Yeah, you have to get his power level all the way down, and then there's like a sort of a first person style section. Jaws! Jaws left us. Got a bunch of his health back. Jaws and his posse. Shark posse. When he's uh, around the uh, the bottom line, that's when you want to try to stab him. But he's got to be lined up just perfectly. You have to use a strobe. Which brings him up out of the water. Oop, I messed up. Got him. Alright, we just beat Jaws. Thanks for the GG's, guys. I appreciate that. Ugh. All right. All right, guys. That's going to do it for me. We got to play two bonus games. <laughs> Those two extra games that I was planning on playing, but they were relatively short. You know, it took us about a half hour to go through both those together. And they weren't even the best runs either, so... I'm just kind of curious if I can sit on the, uh... The port here. I wonder if Jaws will still get me. Based says, gotta get up for work early tomorrow. Good night, guys. Yeah, take care. Thanks for hanging out. I appreciate that. Um, but yeah, guys, I'm gonna get out of here. Um, thank you so much for watching. Thanks for hanging out. I appreciate it. It was a pretty good turnout tonight. You know, for being a midweek stream. Um, but hopefully you enjoyed some of those NES games. Uh, I'll be back soon. With another stream, like I said, I want to try to tackle the original Legend of Zelda again. Uh, I want to do my Genesis Mini 2. Maybe a uh, Game Station Pro stream. And, uh... I feel like there are some other things I wanted to do, but I have to just, uh... Oh! There, I want to do a blind stream of that new Prince of Persia game. I have that coming in the mail. I'd like to do Hades as well, that'd be fun. Maybe another Dead Cells stream. Because I haven't done one in about a year, and I've been really working on that game a lot lately, so... But yeah, stay tuned. I'll try to be back soon with another stream, and I want to try to practice some other games so I can hopefully get you guys some more quick plays. 
in Let's Plays and whatever, so. But yeah, that's gonna do it for me, guys. Thank you for hanging out once again, and I guess uh, until the next one, take it easy. I'll make sure to have this up hopefully sometime tomorrow, time-coded and all that stuff, so uh, watch out for that. But uh, yeah, I'll catch you guys later. Take it easy.